Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, just before I share the word, I've got a few announcements. Um, I said at the, um, while we were praying earlier this morning, let's just, uh, let's celebrate band. Thank you so much, gentlemen. While we we're praying earlier today, I said the church, we are in a, in a season of favor. I don't, I don't know how to explain it, but there is a, there is a favor over the church right now. Uh, you will, the, the details will unfold as we go along. Um, I remember starting ministry, one of the things I used to pray, when I understood that from scriptures, I used to pray what the word of God says that, kings shall be my foster fathers and their queens shall be my nursing mothers. Because I know that God can favor an individual or a group of people so much that government and organizations will start to favor you and even the legislation of the land can start to favor you. If you understood what we're talking about, there is more to live in than just what I, my degree and what I earn. There is, there are certain spiritual rules that, are, that supersede everything you thought you knew. And the people that understood such, such spiritual rules, they key into it as they understand seasons. And I think it's one of those that is right now playing out on behalf of this church. And I said earlier today that when God starts to do something over a nation, over a territory, or over an organization, it is important that you key into it. So that's why I asked you to pray for the king because when a territory is not under a godly king, the citizens suffer. Anytime God wanted to punish a nation, God gives them an ungodly or a lawless king. Go and read the Bible. Anytime God wanted to punish a nation, he gives them a lawless or an ungodly government or king. And so that is why it is the responsibility of the church to pray for the government and for the kings. And anytime God wanted to bless a nation or a, uh, or a territory, God gives them a godly king and a, and a godly king, uh, sorry, a godly and a lawful uh, monarch. So we trust God that the reign of King Charles III will be a godly one in the name of Jesus. So next Sunday, by God's grace, it's going to be our workplace Sunday. And because it's our workplace Sunday and we are keen into the season, so we are discussing mind the season from learning to earning. And I'm hoping that God will start to unfold things for us about the learning process that's been going on in our lives and how our learning process can become our earning process. And we will have conversation with those who are in university and those who have left university recently to look at how the learning process can become an earning process. And so we were trusting God that it would be a fantastic one. But not just that, we're having a visitor next Sunday. Uh, recently, uh, I'll make some noise if you were at that, Richard, when we talked about our, our physical health, about the diet and the food we, we eat and so on. So we have Shola Ola Dipo, who will be coming next week to just come and talk about Healthy Church Initiative for about 10 minutes. But it's not just that. We're having filming crews from the Lambeth Council coming in to come, and, uh, to come and see some things. And during the course of the week, they're coming to do some filming in this place to showcase equipping people and how we've been engaging with the Healthy Church Initiative. Sometimes you pay to get yourself advertised. We're, getting, being, we're being advertised free of charge. And so we, we will have some uh, filming crews here even on the 22nd of September. But Healthy Church Initiative uh, speaker will be here. And we'll have some people from the Lambeth Council also to come and fellowship with us next Sunday. Uh, some, some of us were here when we announced this around May. Uh, we talked about the, the desire of the church to ensure that no one is left out. Because really, it's not everything that the pastor is skilled to handle. So we, we put together a team of people who are actually trained to actually be able to support you if you're going through some 
form of mental health challenge or you need some form of counseling. And so not many people have subscribed to that or engaged with that. So by all means, just to remind you, can I have that up please? Just to remind you that as a church, we have the therapy and counseling team. And so if you would like someone to support you, maybe you're going through some form of mental health uh, challenge and you need some support, please do not suffer in silence. Go on our website, that's nccep.co.uk, and you will find this form on our website. And if you're watching us online, please, by all means, go and subscribe. Click on that form, and it will lead you to the next thing to do. We have people who can support you so that it's not just the pastor or um, Pastor Yinka who can support you. We have people who can support you in the area of career, in the area of mental health, and even with area of your relationship. So please, by all means, do take advantage of all of this. And this week, Richard, I've been thinking, if we're talking about times and seasons, should it not be a time to start talking about the end times? And so this Richard, by God's grace, I want to deal with what we call eschatology studies. And we've not done this before in EP, where we want to talk about the end times. And some of you don't have a clue about it. The only thing you know about end time is what you've seen in films. So I, I, I'm, I'm going to uh, probably re-educate, uneducate, uh, educate you whichever way. Over the next two Wednesdays, we will be dealing with eschatology or the study of end times. To know what has the Bible said, because my brother, my sister, Jesus is coming back. Let's not debate that. So, but let's go through the Bible to understand what has the Bible said about end times so that you don't think that Donald Trump is the Antichrist or you don't assume like somebody said that Obama was the Antichrist so that you're clear, you have an understanding of what the Bible says about end times. You understand what the Bible says about the throne room judgment. You know what the Bible says about the white throne judgment so that you don't live like people who are not discerning. So that we have an understanding of what the Bible says about end times. So we will look at the four types of theological debate about the end times. And I'm hoping that we will have a clearer understanding about what the Bible says about the end times. And last but not the least, in the month of October, we are going back to our cell group. Make some noise to the Lord Jesus. Yeah, yeah, that's so boring. That's so boring. I think angels do better than that. Let's make some noise for the Lord Jesus. So can I have the, can I have the Slido uh, number on, on the screen, please? Please, all I need you to do, just note this number down. All I need you to do is just type where you are watching us from online or where you live. Because we are trusting God that we will reorganize our cell group because when you come to a church, it's very important that you feel that you're part of a community. It's difficult to do that when you're just up amongst quite a very uh, number of people. But when you are within a smaller community, it's much easier to actually be able to engage and you know, express your faith. And I think the best place to pray is actually in cell groups. I think the best place to actually break bread and take communion is in cell groups. And so please take this number down and all you just need to do is just tell us where you live, Aerith, Buckingham Palace, Windsor Castle, just tell us where you live. And if you're watching us online, do tell us where you live because we're hoping to have some online uh, cell groups as well. And uh, if you think that for a very while you've been thinking, I think God is calling me to a place where I would like to actually be shepherding or pastoring a small group of people and be a cell group leader, and you think that God has placed that desire on your heart, please speak to me. Send, me, send me a message. We will take you through a training, and we will, by God's grace, take you through interview, and we will ask you to start to lead a group of people if we feel that God has prepared and gifted you with that. So please don't forget to send us details of where you live so that we can start to pray and plan towards that. Praise the Lord. Turn to one person and say, pay attention to your seasons. No, say to them as if you meant it, pay attention to your seasons. It's important because Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 to 8 talks about different seasons that we experience as individuals. That there is 
a season and a time for every purpose under the earth. I mean, under the heaven. I explained this last Sunday that God is calling us to a place whereby we are to mind the season. Everyone say, mind your season. And if the event around us is not speaking to us, I wonder what will speak to us. Because God is the one that remains constant. Institution come and institution go. Lemon Brothers, people were so, you know, some people lost their lives, some people lost their earnings, some people lost their marriage because Lemon Brothers went bust in 2008. Northern Rock went bust. If IBM knew that what Apple, if IBM knew what Apple would do today, IBM would have stayed awake when they were dreaming. But IBM dreamt and they went to sleep, but Apple dreamt and Apple stayed awake to appreciate and to actualize their dream. And so God is saying to you this season of your life, this is not the season. In fact, each time I thought about IBM, I thought, where did you lose it? Because Apple should not have a voice right now. IBM should be the one that's the leading technology giant. But they dreamt, but they went to sleep with their dream. But Apple dreamt and they stayed awake and they appreciated their dream. When you look at, when you look at Nokia and you look at some other time, you're thinking that what happened to all this technology? So institutions around us, when you see monarchy and you see nations and all kind of things happening, God is saying to every single one of us, mind your season. Say to your neighbor, mind your season. And I spoke to you about the men of Isaac they, in 1 Chronicles 12, 32, that they are people that have the understanding of the times and what Israel ought to do. That is, they have the discernment to spiritually perceive what is happening around them. But they don't just stay there. They know how to mentally and emotionally position themselves so that they are in a place to distinguish what is consequentially necessary. Because at a sudden, it's not everything that you do right now in your life that is necessary. It's not. I've, I've told you before, don't prioritize. Don't just prioritize your tasks. Don't just prioritize everything that you do. I said, in any areas of your life, what you need is to ensure that what, your, what you consider as your priority are the things that you, you focus on more than anything because there will be times that events of life will demand your attention. Marriage will demand your attention. Relationship will demand your attention. That was why when Apostle Paul was talking about marriage, he didn't have a problem with our marriage in 1 Corinthians 7. He was simply saying that when you get married or when you get engaged or there is a, a very attractive young man or young woman in your life, that these things sometimes take our gaze away from God. Money takes our gaze away from God and pain sometimes take our gaze away from God. But they that know that it's, it's not just having a knowledge of, but it is having an intimate relationship because when the Bible says they that know their God, it's the word know there is cover. That is people that have intimate understanding. The same way that the Bible says, Adam and Eve knew one another. They that have intimate understanding of their God, they will be strong and they will do exploits. Say with me, because I have an understanding of my God, I will be strong and I will do exploits. Even in the year of drought, I will not be afraid. Because God is my gyra, and he is the one who will strengthen my hand to battle, my knees to pray, my mind to perceive, and my spirit to be empowered in the mighty name of Jesus. I love the word of God because it is balanced. They know, they, they know how to spiritually discern. They know how to mentally and emotionally position themselves so that they're able to lay hold on what is consequentially necessary. And not only that, they know the corresponding action and measures to put in place. They know that there are times that God might be impressing it on your heart. You've been praying for a while. You've been asking God, what is next concerning my career? Lord, what is next concerning my ministry? And God rarely to speak to people in a crowd. God speaks to you as an individual. Listen, if you are going to, if you're going to amount to anything for in life, God rarely speaks to people in a crowd. You need to be someone who learns how to take time out of the crowd and hear God. 
God rarely speaks to people amongst a clutter. God doesn't speak to people when you're busy with Netflix and Instagram and everything. No, you will need to shut everything down and say, Lord, it's you alone. God doesn't speak to people in a crowd and he doesn't speak to people. I, I'm not saying God will not speak, but I'm talking about words that will transform your life. Words that will empower your life. That are words that will come like that in a crowd, but the one that will change your life, he will take you aside and speak to your life. And so the men of Issachar, they have an understanding of this. And I said to you on Sunday that it's important to ask the question, what season am I in? What does that mean? Because if you stay stuck in the past or you stay fixated about the future, you will miss the season you're in. If you're so fixed on the past, if you're still thinking about what used to be, what could have been, what would have been, or you're thinking what would be and what should be and what is going to be, you will miss the season you're going in. I love the way my wife prayed this morning. My wife asked us to pray that we will, we will understand that the season is not meant to break us, but to make us. Because God is the one that owns all seasons. That the seasons we go through, God intends for this season to actually shape us. God intends for this season to make us to conform to the image of his son, Jesus Christ. God wants us to be his mouthpiece here on earth. So we must not be people that stay stuck with the season of the past. We must not be people that stay too focused. This is the way I put it. If you're driving and you're constantly just looking at the rear view mirror, you will crash. But if you're also driving and the only thing you just do is just looking ahead and you're not checking, you will equally crash. So God wants us to pay attention. Say to your neighbor, pay attention to your season. Secondly, I said to you, pay attention to the season of your faith. Because in Romans 13 verse 11, Romans 13, 11, the word of God says, to live like this is all the more urgent. For time is running out. Everyone say time is running out. You know what? I've, I, I found that quite very interesting. I, I actually had the, I, 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 I chuckled a bit that you can imagine they wrote this thousands of years ago and they said time is running out. And this is 2022. And we don't even think about it. These guys wrote it thousands ago and they said, time is running out. The greeting of the church at the time, whenever they met one another was Maranatha. And Maranatha meant, come Lord Jesus. They were so focused on Jesus. It was not about, the greeting was Maranatha. You know the, the scripture we often quote uh, about I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. It was a greeting in the, in the New Testament. That's the way they used to greet one another. They say Maranatha. And then they pray for one another. I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. In other words, I wish above all things that you have a 3D healthy life. Your spiritual life is prospering. Your physical life is prospering. Your mental and emotional and mental health, well-being, well, your life, 3D is prospering. And then say time is running out and you know it's a strategic hour in human history. It is time for us to wake up for our full salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. Question, why would Paul be saying our full salvation? So it is salvation in measures or what? But Paul was not just referring to the process of saying, Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Paul was referring to the time when Jesus will return. And that is our full salvation. Because we were saved. We are being saved and we will still be saved. And we as believers need to have an understanding of these things. So that it's not just, you know, things that just sensitize your emotion and you just say, whoo, that's, no, you need to understand we were saved, we're being saved. What I mean is some people will lose their faith before Jesus arrived. Why? Because Paul the beloved said, uh, say to Archippus, Archippus was a guy in the Bible, and he said, say to Archippus to pay attention to the ministry that he has received from the Lord to ensure that he finishes it. Because they, the fact that God has given you a ministry or you sing very well or you're very good with camera or you're very good with ushering doesn't, is not a guarantee that you will make it to heaven. I'm not a prophet of doom. I'm just being, I'm just being real. It's not a guarantee. So Paul said, 
For our full salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. In other words, it is time to pay attention because there will be more distraction than ever. Um, I, I'm trying to remember the guy that Paul was saying that because he loved the, the pleasures of this world, that he had left him. A any theologian can tell me who that I, I'm trying to remember. This guy, if you read the epistles, Paul was eulogizing this guy. Paul was talking about how this guy was a, was a, was a Christian soldier. He was talking about how this guy was dead when he was writing to the, to the Corinthians, when he was writing to the Galatians. Paul was talking about how this person was so like full on there, Christian, believing God. Pardon? Demas, God bless you. I know I have some theologians in this place. Paul was talking about how Demas was a committed believer. Demas was focused. Demas knew what he was doing. There was a balance in Demas's life. Demas was a good, I'm just, I, I didn't read that in the Bible, but I'm assuming that Demas was a committed husband. Demas was a committed father. Demas was giving, tithing, and offering. Demas was serving very well. Demas was, was committed. And something shifted. Because I saw at least there's about two or three places where Paul was talking about Commit the commitment of Demas to the church. By the end of his life, Paul asked for John Mark to be brought to him. But he said, for Demas has forsaken me because he has preferred the pleasures of this world. Anytime I read that Bible, do you know what my prayer is always is, Lord, please, whatever it will cost, please may I not miss home. Paul said, for our full salvation, that is the time when Jesus will return and we will go to see the Lord in glory, that time is nearer now than when we first believed. Say to your neighbor, the time of our full salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. And what that means is that if you have friends right now who are not living right or who are not saved, which one of you will look at your friend and a, and, a, and a 20 ton trailer is about to crush them and you will not move them out of the way? No, you will move them out of the way. So if you knew someone right now who's not saved, this is the time to start looking for those that God will use you to bring to his kingdom. Looking for souls to win. Looking for people to preach to. This is the time for our full salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. Hence why we're talking about eschatology this week. I asked you to pay attention to the season of your... I was just going to go over, but the Holy Spirit actually asked me to go back to this because I was, I was going to just go and watch service last week. But I just needed to remind you, pay attention to the season of your growth. The question is, what am I feeding on this season of my life? What am I feeding on? There are times I love to read books that motivate me. But there are times I like to read books that challenges me and cuts me. If the only type of book you read as a believer is only the books that encourages and motivates you, that means you're only feeding on the milk alone. And the milk of the word is not wrong. So don't, don't, get, don't let's get our theology wrong. When people say, oh, you're only drinking milk. There's nothing wrong with the milk. Paul said, desire milk like a newborn baby that you may grow thereby. So there is a place of the milk of the word. There's a place of reading books that encourages you. There's a place of reading books that motivates you. There's a place of reading the Psalms that encourages you, that pour fire on the, on the head of your, of your enemy and all of that. Good luck on that. There's a place of that. But there is also the place of reading things that puts you right. There's a place of reading things that are not kind of caressing and smoothening things. There's a place where you read certain things and tell you that your attitude to your husband was wrong. There's a place that says the attitude to your parents was wrong. There's a place that says your attitude to money was wrong. Can I correct something Bukun said here? Uh, where is he? That said, oh, you know, uh, it's not only about money. Let me correct that and get this fact right. Yes, by all means, serve, give in your neighborhood, give, um, give uh, by serving people. But we cannot, because of the, 
the way things work in this society go against the word of God. No, if you're not coming to honor God with your substance, you are living in disobedience. Full stop. Because the word of God is there. That honor the Lord, unless that's not in the scripture, maybe I'm reading a different scripture. It says, honor the Lord with your substance and with the fullness of your income, honor the Lord your God. It is in the Bible. God said, bring into my house the, the, your tithe that there may be food in my house, that I may rebuke the devourer for your sake. So let's not, because of the world we live in now, turn the word of God around. No, let's get that fact straight. You don't go to visit someone that is important to you empty-handed, do you? When we go to visit people, my wife will say, we need to go to a store to go and buy something to do shopping. To take. Why? Because we think they're important. Why should we turn up in God's presence empty-handed? And God is saying, let it be an accursed if I do not honor those who honor me. I'm not looking, I, I'm hoping that equipping people will not be the church that we're begging you to give to God. <laughs> the job you have and the life you have, who gave it to you? It is God. So when we say it's tied, it's time to give to God. Let's honor and celebrate God. And on top of that, you can give to your community, serve your community, do chin chin and puff puff and jollof fry and, and crazy jollof fries, do all of that. But please do not rob God of what he has blessed you with. Selah. So Paul said, only those who are unskilled are the one that partakes of milk. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age. And they have, by the reason of their, the use of their senses, they discern the right from what is, what is evil. So please ask the question, what wisdom is enabling a mind shift in my life this season? What am I feeding on? Because there's a lot of East, uh, Eastern religion material out there that has been, that has been paneled with few scriptures. But they are Eastern religion teachings. They are Eastern religions teaching. Listen, if you, if, feel free to challenge me with any question you have about money or about anything. I'm more than happy for you to challenge me with any question you have. There's a lot of Eastern religion materials that have been sandwiched by I mean, few scriptures and have been written and been published as books and been preached as messages and believers are buying into it. When the Bible talks about false prophets, it doesn't mean someone that will say Jesus is not the Lord. No, it's just someone that will just bring a bit that is not in Jesus, mix a bit of Jesus and present it to the church. What wisdom is enabling a mind shift in my life, this season of my life? Pay attention to the season of your change. Who am I becoming this season of my life? Write this down. Every season is one of becoming. Every season of your life is one of becoming. It might not always be one of blooming because when we talk about season, we're, we're probably thinking about, oh, this is going to get better. And so, no, 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 no. There are certain times that seasons of life is because God wants to cut you. God wants you to die to self. So because when we're talking about season, don't let's get it. This is not some kind of woke preaching. No, I'm not doing work preaching to you. I'm telling you because my job as a shepherd is to feed you. That it's not every season that comes with blooming. But every season comes with becoming. You either become what God wants you to be or you become what your flesh is luring you to become. But what God wants to do in every season is so that we become more like Jesus. That we become more like Jesus. That will become more like Jesus. Because as we behold as if in a mirror, we are being transformed into his image. Whether you work in a banking sector, that you become more like Jesus. I'm taking the, uh, the, the leaders away over the next two weeks. And one of the guys that we're going to look at is alive. He's a guy called Ayua Falabi who works, works with KPMG. And how he stood for integrity in a, in a society that was a bit kind of messed up. And how Ayuafolabi stood for integrity. When other people in KPMG were kind of just looking at how things are. 
that you can work in a corporate sector and you don't have to compromise Jesus. You can be a full-time wife or a full-time husband or a parent and not compromise Jesus. You can enjoy being 30 or 25 or being a student in university and not compromise Jesus. It's a life from hell that if you want to enjoy life, you will need to just mix Jesus with something. It's a life from hell. I love life. We had some crazy, sizzling, romantic time in France when his children were asleep or locked up in another room. But we love Jesus and we love to enjoy life. So every season is one of becoming. Ask your neighbor, what are you becoming? What are you becoming? Because really, if the season comes and it does not bring a form of change into your life, to become more like Jesus, I'm not to- saying that this is a church of perfect people. No, don't get me wrong. And don't say, well, we have to be t- tipping on, stepping on tiptoe around pastor. No. I was once messed up, jacked up, and I still get messed up every now and then. But I always run to the grace that I found in Christ Jesus, always remembering that I have no strength except the one I found through the cross. But I'm saying don't stay in your messed up situation. Become. Say to someone, Become. Become a giant of faith. Become a giant in place of prayer. Become a giant. You might say, Pastor, I don't even understand. I don't even know where Psalm is. Let's talk about Ecclesiastes. You can start from somewhere. Become. Become a man that your nation will be proud of. Become a man or a woman that your society will be proud of. Become a student that your department will be proud of. Become someone that God will be proud of because you stood for God even in a, in a season that was compromising. You stood for God. A wise believers understand that we grow through change that every season brings into our lives. Praise the Lord. So why do we need to understand season? This was where I didn't get to. Why do we need, because what what, what is all these things, Pastor? Why do we need to understand season? Number one, the understanding of season and times will propel you to make necessary spiritual and emotional decisions. Understanding of times and seasons will propel you to make necessary emotional and spiritual decisions. Because understanding of season will enable you. I, I'll give you an example. I, in, in August, I just told myself that, okay, my birthday is, is, is the 21st of September. And I decided because I've been sensing this since July. That the church, this is the seventh year of, I mean, we just, we just turned seven. And I know that seven means a cycle has come to an end. And a new cycle is about to start. The the first cycle of my ministry was in 2014. And it was, I took time out for about 40 days, seeking God's face, praying with my wife. At the end of that cycle, equipping people was birthed. And I knew the church has turned seven now. A new cycle is about to start. And I do not want to miss what God had in mind for the new cycle for the church. And I made up my mind right from July that I was going to take a time out to see God's face again. Because I sense in my mind, I sense in my spirit that there is something God is going to birth in the lives of his people in this church. And those who are joining us online and as many that are rightly positioned and aligned to the commissioning of God in this house. Not because we're special but it's because of what God has turned his gaze on us this season. And so I decided from the, from the 1st of September that I'm just going to just take time out to just be fasting till God tells me, stop, maybe the 21st, because it's my birthday. And I've been asking God for certain birthday presents. And I've been seeing God beginning to do things already. And as many of you that you feel like that, Please take time out of this season of your life and seek God's face in place of fasting and prayer. Because understanding of times and season propel you to make necessary spiritual and emotional decisions. Daniel chapter 9 verse 2 to 3. Daniel talking about how he perceived that the age that God said 
Israel should stay in imprisonment was coming to an end and he decided to seek God's face about it. If right now in this stage of your life, maybe you're just about to, you're, this, you're in a final year in university, I would encourage you to take time out. Say, Lord, what do you have in mind after university? You're considering going into a relationship. I would advise you to take time out. Lord, what's in your mind? You're about to start a new project or a new job. I will advise you take time out. Lord, what's on your heart? Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Ask, call unto me and I will answer. And I will show you great and mighty things that you did not know. Listen, it's not everything that is revealed by Google. There are things that God reveals. And Wikipedia has not updated it yet. If my wife would not mind me saying this. That we've been in a situation somewhere in the past. And we, we, we had a conversation with an organization. And they were giving us this, they were giving us attitude. And they were telling us, go and research it. There's no record of this and this ever being recorded. <laughs> and we searched and searched. There was no record, truly. And one day I was at work. And I was just thinking about it. And the Holy Spirit said, why are you believing them? Why don't you ask me to show you the stone that killed Goliath? And I said, Lord, I'm sorry. Please show me the stone that killed Goliath. I tell you, the things that we have searched for weeks and months, in less than 10 minutes, God gave me the revelation that I needed. And that was the final answer to the problem. I'm talking about, I think, 2000, maybe 2009 or, or two, sorry, 2011. The understanding of times and season will propel you to make necessary spiritual and emotional decisions. Number two, the understanding of times and season will prevent you from sacrificing your future harvest for today's desire. When you understood the season, that there is there, there are times that God tells you, wait, wait, don't, don't, don't go. Just, just stay with me. He looks as if, Pastor, I, I, I mean, God, I need to move. I, I, I've been here for so long and all my mates, this has happened to them. That's, and God said, no, 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 wait. Just, just wait. Just wait with me. Just wait with me. Because if you don't learn how to wait, you're just about to sacrifice your harvest because of the pain of the now and the desire of the now. I almost missed who I was going to marry because of the electricity supply. Because the electricity supply was erratic. And I thought, you know what? I'm done with this area. I was going to move. And God said, no, don't. And I'm thinking, I need to. And God said, no, don't. Just stay. Three months later, I met my wife. Who knows? I, I, maybe I would have married an elephant or chimpanzee or anything. But God kept me in there. You know when they brought people to Adam? They brought elephant. They brought chimpanzee. They brought everything. She said, he, he said, no, until Eve came. Maybe they will have bring Goliath, I mean, uh, giraffe and all of that to me as well. Understanding of time and season will prevent you from sacrificing future gains for today's desire. You will not move until God asks you to move. Even when it doesn't seem pleasant, even when people tell you, are, are you dumb? Why don't you do? You don't know. God has not asked me to do it. And it will look to some people as if you're foolish. Understanding of time and season will say to you, when everybody else are using their money to go on holiday, understanding of time and season will say to you, look, honor God first. Regardless of what you needed to spend on, honor God first. And people will think, why? Pastor Akin has enough money. Why do you need to add to the money for him to buy jets? I'm not buying jets with church money, just to say. Understanding of time and season will prevent you sacrificing your harvest because of today's desire and because of today's pain. What does that simply mean? Because if you don't have a proper understanding of time and season, what you are seems to be more important or what you want 
seems to be more important than who God wants you to become. Because you don't understand time and season. What you want seems to be more important. What you want in terms of career, what you want in terms of your relationship will be more important to you than who God wants you to become because you did not understand time and season. Understanding of time and season will expose the plan of the enemy to you. I've shared this with you that there was a time in my life that I found some believers around me. People were just backsliding. People were just getting into unnecessary sin. And I was going, on, what, what, what's going on? I one day God opened my eyes and I saw a demonic entity holding a, 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 a scepter of power. And God said, as long as that scepter of power was raised up, all the believers that you're seeing, they will be falling into sin. And I called all intercessors together and I said, it's time for solemn assembly. That power must come down. And that was what happened. Understanding of time and season, it exposes the plans of the enemy and it reveals God's promise to you. It exposes the plans of the enemy and reveals God's plan. Understanding of time and season, it will enable you to make the right decisions that God wants you to do. And I'm going to stop there today because we're going to take time to pray. Because God has been saying to me that I need my people to understand that it is time to shine. It is time for them to arise and to shine for their light has come. For the glory of the Lord is risen upon them. When God says it's time to rise and to shine, it's not just shining in terms of just you having money. But it is time for the glory of God to be revealed through you. An electric bulb does not have a power on its own. It is the filament of God inside of your life inside of your education inside of your relationship it is a filament of god that catches the current that comes from god and turn your life a lit or oh, is he a light so that i don't uh, i don't mess up uh, grammar there and just light your life up and god is saying i want to just light you up i want to light you up every garment of shame is giving way for garments of celebration Every time of sorrow is giving way for time of rejoicing. Every time of pain, God is saying, I am doing a new thing. Would you not see it? God is saying, I'm making way in the wilderness. God is saying there will be river from high places. God is saying for every desert experience, I'm bringing a, a flourishing experience to you. God is saying the days of your mourning has ended. God is saying that there will be every dry bone rising up to receive life and there will be life being given to every deadness. God is saying, pay attention to the season. Yeah. Pay attention to the season because the rain is about to fall. Pay attention to the season so that the rain does not catch you outside. Pay attention to the season so that you collect the river of God when it flows. Pay attention to the season because I'm about to pour out my spirit. I was asking earlier that Cindy Jacob was, uh, you might not know Cindy Jacob, but she's very great in the prophetic arena. She's been speaking about what God has been showing about United Kingdom recently. And I think God is saying to the church, get ready. Get ready because the voice of the church will be heard again. It's not a coincidence that recently they were doing an analysis about uh, the prime minister, the new prime minister. And they were carrying an analysis and they saw that almost everyone within the new cabinet, they were people that voted for heterosexual relationships. When God wants to do something new, he starts putting righteous people in position. It doesn't mean that they are, they are not people who are messed up amongst them. But I believe that God is recovering righteousness back to this nation. Would you rise with me this morning as we pray? We're just going to pray this morning. There's a song that just over the weekend, the Holy Spirit laid on my heart. to say that the word of God has come to you today. Would you receive it? Would you believe it? And we believe that it is our season. It is time to shine again. It is time to shine again. But listen, the Bible also says that those who preach the gospel, that they shine like righteous stars. So it's not just our shining in our places of work alone. God wants us to understand the season so that we can also shine for him and shine through him. And God is saying, pay attention to the season you're in. Because I am about to do something new.